Good morning to all. Uh, my name is Dr. Valay Ashara. Uh, I work as a medical doctor uh, in the Asansol project, MSF India, West Bengal. Uh, so today I'm going to present uh, uh, a prescription audit that MSF staff did on the local doctors in Asansol. To tell you something about Asansol, uh, it is 220 kilometers from Kolkata and second largest city of West Bengal. There are a lot of uh, coal, coal mines and steel plants in that region. Uh, this is one of the villages shown in that coal belt. You can see the location from the data gathered. Uh, point, uh, there's about 0.5 government doctors per uh, thousand residents. Right now, MSF is based uh, at two sites, district hospital and uh, one of the primary health center. I'll tell you something more about the sites. So both are outpatient clinics and work from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. apart from Sundays when they are closed. Uh, the patients who want to see the doctor are given clinical notes and they are allowed to keep, keep it after the consultation is done and that is the only form of data that is there. Uh, it, uh, uh, the, the clinic in the district hospital is uh, outpatient pediatric clinic yeah. with one uh, Ministry of Health pediatrician and uh, one Ministry of Health uh, uh, pediatrician board training. They see about 110 patients per day. Uh, there is an x-ray site available, x-ray on site available. Uh, so, uh, something about the primary health center, uh, there's one uh, Ministry of Health general practitioner or medical officer who sees all age groups there uh, and they see about 225 patients per day. There's no x-ray at site available uh, in the primary health center. I'll, uh, right now, MSF is... Uh, uh, working to uh, treat uh, uh, acute respiratory illnesses in the pediatric population. And uh, we are also learning about uh, antibiotic resistance in, in the Asansol region, alongside with the Ministry of Health. So uh, in December 2016, uh, our project was uh, concerned with fever in the pediatric group of populations, but later it was decided uh, we will open respiratory illness clinics and to understand more about the uh, antibiotic resistance in that area. So uh, we wanted to learn about the baseline practices of doctors in, in that particular region, and that's why we did this audit. So we want to actually uh, see the prescribing practices of uh, uh, pediatricians in the district uh, hospital and general practitioners in the uh, primary health center. Uh, diagnosis made, prescription format, and other medications prescribed were a few of the parameters that we studied. But today, uh, we'll, I, I'll try to concentrate more on the antibiotic prescription uh, patterns. How did we do it? So it was an exit survey uh, over two weeks. Uh, so first of all, all children who wants to see the doctor would come across uh, MSF staff uh, who, if they meet the criteria, I'll talk about criteria later. Uh, Later on, the nurse will put a symbol on the, on the prescription paper and the child is allowed to see the doctor. After the exit, they again come across uh, another MSF staff who uh, actually takes a picture of the prescription uh, and uh, the data is extracted, entered into a spreadsheet and uh, then the photo is destroyed. Uh, the, uh, about the inclusion criteria, like I mentioned, uh, the age group that we decided was six months to uh, 12 years. Uh, this is as per uh, the agreement that we made with the local authorities. Plus any of cough, sore throat, runny or blocked nose, uh, difficulty breathing, ear pain, discharge. Um, any patient with fever or history of fever was excluded from the 
uh, study because, like I said, this was done in uh, December 2016 where we were um, seeing a fever in the pediatric population. So uh, anyway, uh, any patient with fever uh, saw a MSF doctor, so they were not a part of the study. To tell you something more about the fo uh, photo that we took, uh, parameters like age, assessment, diagnosis, medication, duration were taken. And later on, like I said, uh, the photo was destroyed. And this was after uh, taking proper permission from the authorities. So these are the results that we uh, came up to. Uh, we saw about 268 patients, uh, 201 in district hospital, and 67 in the primary health center. The mean age uh, of the patients was 45 months in the district hospital, uh, while it was 40 months in the primary health center. So 61% of patients were prescribed antibiotics uh, in the district hospital and 67% in primary health center. Mind you, these are the patients uh, that were without fever. Um, one of the very striking difference between the two clinics was that 75% of patients uh, were recorded diagnosis in district hospital and in the primary health center there was no diagnosis recorded in the prescription paper it was only the medication that was given indicators of severity of the patient was not documented in any of the clinics these are few more uh, things that uh, we concluded the ever uh, the mean antibiotic duration at the district hospital was five days and three days in the primary health center Non-pharma advice like steam inhalation, hot fermentation, uh, hydration was about 20% in district hospital, while only 4% in primary health center. Generic antibiotic prescriptions were about 83% in uh, district hospital and only 13% in primary health center. Doctors followed a, a standard prescription format in 95% uh, in district hospital, while it was uh, very less, about 13% in primary health center. The most commonly uh, prescribed antibiotic was amoxicillin and cleolinic acid uh, in the district hospital, and in the primary health center, it was amoxicillin. This was the graph that uh, we plotted. Uh, that's the antibiotic given against the diagnosis made. Uh, so uh, as uh, there are a few important things uh, seen from this graph, uh, as you can see, anyone, with, uh, anyone who are given diagnosis of common cold were not given antibiotics. Uh, on the other hand, uh, any patients who were given um, the diagnosis, diagnosis of uh, uh, lower respiratory tract infection were given antibiotics, all of them. Um, as you can also see that, uh, many patients uh, who were not given any diagnosis and a large portion of such patients were given antibiotics. When they made a diagnosis, uh, it was something like RTI, which is respiratory tract infection, which in itself is a very nonspecific diagnosis again. And um, as you can see, a very large portion of uh, patients received antibiotics for that. So this is the this is the desk of uh, one of the doctors um, in the government hospital. Uh, we can see a lot of uh, medical literature from the medical uh, representative, and uh, we all know that uh, this is forbidden, but uh, it, it it still happens. Uh, we shared our findings with the local health authorities and. Uh, the head of, uh, head of Department of Pediatrics at the district hospital was happy with the first step that MSF took for uh, antibiotic stewardship, but he was not sure how he can help further. The chief medical officer at the uh, primary health center was uh, surprised that uh, the uh, diagnosis was missing from the notes, but was, on the other hand, happy uh, uh, with the antibiotic prescription rate. What did we uh, learn? Like it was easy to do this study. Uh, uh, the patients and the local doctors accepted the technique. The limitations of this study uh, are that it is, it is actually difficult to comment on the appropriateness of antibiotics as 
very limited information is given on the assessment of the patient and the clinical diagnosis made. Uh, it was a point prevalence audit uh, within a very short time frame, only two weeks. So we are, uh, there are ongoing discussions with the local health authorities there on how we can uh, take this cause further, how we can uh, decrease the antibiotic prescription rates. And um, there are some talks that uh, uh, we make uh, treatment guidelines and uh, offer it to the um, uh, doc doctors after the local consensus, but uh, how it will actually help the local authorities and doctors is yet to be determined. So uh, since last uh, few months, we, are, we, we have opened a respiratory clinic, and this is one of the problems that we came across. And it was that uh, the patient themselves, they, they actually expect a longer list of medications in their uh, prescription papers. And uh, we are trying to find a way around it. In summary, in this prescription survey, uh, it can be said that 61% and 66% of children with acute respiratory illness were given antibiotics. Uh, and these were the patients who were without fever. Uh, limited documentation on outpatient clinical notes was very common, like I discussed, and uh, carrying out the survey was acceptable to doctors, patients, and caretakers. So this, this study was not possible without uh, help from my team back in Asansol. Um, thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ashar. Uh, Prescription analysis is a simple but very important tool to understand um, the prescription habits of doctors. But also, this is a very worrying study. It gives you a sense of you know, what is not being done right. Uh, questions? Uh, Hi, thank you. I'm Jyoti from CDEP. Thank you for that study. It was a very small but very informative study. I think it also points, like you have said, about two important areas. Though uh, in clinical practice, viral infections that happen quite a lot uh, tend to be given antibiotics, which is irrational use. So that is where stewardship with the medical college and the clinical practitioners will help. But also a fact that comes out very clearly from your study is the, uh, the demand for antibiotics from the community or not knowing the need for the antibiotic in case of anything they suffer. So besides, uh, I think, doing stewardship programs with uh, clinical facilities, it's um, also important to do advocacy with the public and the common man who's entering the clinic that, you know, trust the doctor or uh, do not ask for antibiotics unless you have been uh, prescribed and don't insist on it or if you have been prescribed an antibiotic, double check because there are long-term implications like we are discussing today for livestock, for health, human health and with the binding pipeline, it's not needed. So I think we're, we're doing a lot of work with the health facilities and that's really good. But at the same time, there's a lot of need to educate the common masses on the, the nature of this epidemic, which is impending. Very true. I so did you do anything of this sort? Actually, yes, we, uh, we try to educate the people during consultation all the time. And we have our communications team who is working very hard against this. Uh, we give a lot of advice, uh, non-pharma advice, that can help them with the uh, disease when it's acute and then the symptoms will eventually subside. So, yes, we are actually uh, trying uh, a lot to uh, make the people understand the importance of not taking an antibiotic when it's not required. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. I'm uh, Jyotsna Puri. I'm with the Green Climate Fund. Um, so I I'm a non-medical doctor. Uh, for me, what came out really interestingly was that there was such a stark contrast between uh, the practice at the district hospital and the primary health care center. And I was wondering whether you'd seen it in other cases and systematically as well. Because I noticed that in one of your, in your list of next steps, I didn't see um, you thinking about perhaps investigating this divergence um, across other sites and then trying to see as to whether this was also 
well, first, of course, explaining the difference between the two, between the district hospital and the primary health care center, but then also seeing whether this was systematic and whether if you could find a systematic difference, then uh, what conclusions you could get for policy there. And don't forget the, prime, uh, the private health care providers. We haven't even talked about them in the district. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, like, uh, like I said, uh, there is a very big difference between the district health and the uh, primary health center. The one of, and we have talked about the authorities who are in the primary health center, why the such difference is there. One of their concern is the, the less number of doctors that are there uh, at one time. So uh, they see, like, their actually excuses, like they see about 225 patients in four hours and uh, with only one doctor there at, at, the, at one time. So uh, that was their excuse that it's really not possible to assess all the patients and write all the clinical notes for each and every patient for they have to see a lot of patients. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. No. One second. Yeah, please. I'm Ankur from a university research company. So uh, I had a small question. Was, was there any difference in terms of the profile of the doctor or doctors in two facilities in terms of their specialty or experience? I'm yeah, like, like I said, uh, in the district hospital, uh, there's one consultant pediatrician and there's his helper, uh, his pediatrician board trainee at one time while in the uh, uh, PHCs, uh, it was, uh, it was one uh, medical officer uh, who is a general practitioner and sees all age groups at once. So that was the, that's how it happens. Yeah. So, and he's a doctor, MBBS yeah. doctor. All right. Um, yeah, I'm Dr. Santosh uh, uh, from SARA board. Uh, just one question is like a 61 person uh, of, of the, and a 67 person of the of both groups. Uh, were prescribed antibiotics. That's, right. one of, that's the only finding. But uh, how would we arrive at a conclusion that these these were if if, if are we uh, going for a conclusion that these prescriptions were irrational? Because uh, we actually we don't have any tools of uh, the, of knowing that even the 61 or 67 patient person had a bacterial load. So, uh, but uh, so, uh, how are we actually going to direct this to a conclusion that uh, if there is there a, a rational practice or not? That's how. Uh, I, I understand, uh, and actually, that is one of the uh, like I mentioned uh, when I was giving the presentation. This is one of the limitations of the study, because from whatever information we have from from the clinical notes, uh, not enough data is actually there to say that this is or not an appropriate antibiotic prescription. All, but it is safe to say that uh, there's a lot of clinical data that is missing from the uh, uh, clinical notes. Sure. We'll take one last question and then we move on to the panel discussion. Suman? Yeah. Uh, I'm from DNDI. I'm Dr. Right. Suman Rijal. Uh, thanks for your presentation. Thank you. I just wanted to share with you that there are multiple factors that can play a role in these prescribing habits. And some of them are very obvious. Uh, as you mentioned, they've got the load of the uh, number of patients they have to see. But then I think re recently we have been hearing a lot, especially from West Bengal, of uh, defensive medicine because of the you know, hyper uh, sensitivity of the population to s incidents where you know, sometimes you have what morbidity mortalities, which are quite obvious in some instances, so doc doctors are doing defensive medicine. And there's another issue I would like to uh, also bring to you know, the thoughts, for, for some thoughts is, uh, we have to see how we are training our graduates. Uh, what Sorry, I can see uh, are medi our? medical graduates. Because most of the times, as you see, we are they're exposing them to tertiary care hospitals, we are exposing them to uh, you know, inpatients, and very little exposure to working in the PHCs. So I think there's also a fundamental lack of experience on, you know, especially in the PHCs. When you see, when you send doctors after they are you know, recruited and they do have very little exposure in managing patients at such 
limited, because the type of patients which will present to you PHC and hospitals are quite different. So this is from my experience from my previous job that we, you know, we see that there is a difference when you train them at, in the different ways. This is just some comments. I mean, uh, it's, it's, a re it's really a valid point from your side. Uh, and uh, the doctors have actually also said, and we have experienced quite sometimes uh, aggression from the patient's side if s something happens to the patient. If so, uh, so sometimes uh, the doctor actually uh, replies by saying that we can't take chance. Uh, if the patient is really far from the primary health center or district hospital, and is, if it's very difficult for him to come when, when the situation rises, it can be very difficult for the patient in general, and uh, so they prescribe the antibiotics that they do sometimes. Okay.